the Acropolis is one of the things you have to see in a visit to ancient Athens, so off we went. The Acropolis, the high city, this remarkable geographic feature, uh, this uh, hill in the middle of the city and on top of it all these wonderful buildings. So off we went early one morning and so did a lot of other people. We took lots of pictures and every time we took a picture someone else was in the viewfinder and while taking the picture we were no doubt blocking someone else's view. A part of the area was roped off for some filming and that gave some hint of the serenity and calm and austere grace it might have had in its day. But on the other side of the rope there were we tourists shuffling along uh, on the scree, dodging the impedimentia of the modern building site. Not permitted to go into any of the buildings anymore, so lots of pictures from the outside trying to give a sense of the scale, the durability, the weight, and the size. I went to the far end of the hill and took this shot looking back, and then we circumnavigated the Parthenon, which is the central feature, not the only one, but the central feature of the Acropolis, trying to pick out uh, some of the detail and to give standing as close as possible and looking up to give some sense of height and scope of what we saw. There is a museum on the Acropolis, but it was closed in anticipation of moving of the artifacts to the new museum down the slope. Here is Athena's owl at the door of the old museum. Couldn't get any closer than that. And here's the gate. On, we're on our way out here, walking down once again. Very well-worn marble steps with scree on top of them, and not a hand rail or a safety mat uh, in sight. When you go to the Acropolis, you have to think about Lord Elgin and those marbles when you look at the Parthenon. And whatever your conclusion one comes to about that, there's no doubt the new museum is a brilliant conception to relate the two together and to make present what is absent in the new museum with the glass roof and glass doors and so on. We couldn't go in. It wasn't open uh, in anticipation for movement, but uh, read and saw a lot about it. These are some of the Elgin marbles in the British Museum that are contested. What I know is that Elgin found Turkish occupiers burning statues like this to make potash, and that's how he began his collection. The Acropolis is visible from many parts of Athens, particularly the Plaka, the old part around the Acropolis. That's my first view. I took lots of other pictures uh, and lots more like that. It's view from the Karamaikos, the ancient cemetery where Pericles gave that famous speech. And it would have been on his right as he stood in the Diplon Gate facing the city. Uh, and that's something like the view he would have had of it there on his right. It's also view uh, also can be seen from the grounds of the Temple of Zeus, which is a bit further away and on the other side gives a different aspect. and gives you some idea of the way it occupies that uh, hilltop. And then I went to the back of the grounds of the Temple of Zeus and took this picture to try to give some sense of scope of it. And then I got arty and tried to, uh, well, did this picture uh, through a couple of the pillars that remain standing. It's also visible from the hill next door, the Pinaka, which is not nearly as well developed. That's the site uh, that a speaker on the Pinaka would have had on his right, the Acropolis. You probably can't see it, but it's full of people crawling over it. The Pinnock is where the Ecclesiastica meant, the Democratic Assembly, and uh, maybe 10,000 men would have stood on this ground and listened to somebody standing on the bema, the speaker's dais. On the grounds of the Acropolis is also the Theater of Dionysius, very uh, richly decorated. Note that guy down at the end. It was here that plays by uh, Sophocles and Euripides and others would have been performed and uh, the elite would have gathered uh, to hear them and many members of this well the members of the citizen body which are an elite themselves there's that chap down at the end that I asked you to keep your eye on and there's the uh, the seating uh, the seat in the back in the that stands out with a back is the seat of the judge uh, the other seats with backs would have been for important people the Parthenon is also visible from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, so I had a chance to go there in, Octo in August of 2007, and there's the full-sized replica built in 1896 on the occasion of the centenary of Tennessee statehood to show that Nashville was a center for education and learning. 
built a, built exactly according to our knowledge of what it would have looked like, uh, especially on the inside with a gigantic statue of Athena, which stands on this uh, riser, and that's the frieze and on the front of the riser, more than 40 feet tall, uh, ritually jeweled, gilded, and decorated. Now, this statue is completely lost to history because there was no Lord Elgin to save it and take it away. Uh, there was a second statue of Athena on the Acropolis, a uh, much larger bronze statue outside, and it was visible from the sea for those who were steering to Piraeus Harbor. Athena is shown here with all of her accoutrements uh, and implementia, uh, and it's quite something. I was there by myself, uh, and that's my picture to document that I was there and not just downloaded these things from websites, uh, so it was quite splendid. No trip is complete without a couple of snow domes. We take these out at Christmas time and in so doing remind ourselves of the good fortune we've had to be able to see so many parts of the world. There are Greek snow domes and they're coming but they'll come a bit later. This is the end of part two.